Charles Leclerc delighted the passionate Tifosi at Imola by clinching a podium finish, with the crowd adorned in red cheering heavily for both the Monegasque driver and his teammate Carlos Sainz throughout the race. But Leclerc has thrown down the gauntlet to Red Bull and McLaren following Ferrari's loss at Imola. He has implied that they're doing something weird with their engines after the Emilia-Romagna Grand Prix. What does he mean by that? Let's hear what he has to say in today's video. So keep watching. Leclerc started in third place behind Red Bull's Max Verstappen and McLaren's Lando Norris at Imola, and he finished in the same position, eight seconds behind Verstappen, who was caught up by Norris in the closing stages. He secured Ferrari's first podium finish at Imola since Michael Schumacher's win for the Scuderia in 2006. Ferrari brought a big upgrade package to Imola, which seemed to perform well during Friday practice, but the Scuderia fell behind in qualifying and the race, a weakness Leclerc pointed out. The Monegasque driver felt that something weird was happening with how Ferrari's two rivals were using their energy. Leclerc shared this with Sky Sports F1. I think our race pace is very, very strong. I'm more optimistic than yesterday looking back at the qualifying because this is where I think we're lacking on a weekend like this. We lost everything in the straights and they are doing something weird with the energy, engine-wise McLaren and Red Bull. We will look into that. Once we fix that, we've got a real shot of going back onto the top step of the podium. Carlos Sainz, on the other hand, expressed a huge amount of disappointment with his Ferrari's performance during the 2024 Emilia-Romagna Grand Prix at Imola. Despite the team's recent upgrades, Sainz struggled mightily. The Emilia-Romagna Grand Prix was a slower race overall, but for Ferrari's Carlos Sainz it was marked by frustration. Under the cloudy skies of Imola, Sainz started fourth on the grid, having benefited from Oscar Piastri's penalty. The 29-year-old brought his Ferrari home in fifth, after a relatively quiet race, dealing with issues that plagued his race from the beginning. Today, we were simply lacking quite a lot of pace. I'm not very happy, because I'm pretty sure after qualifying yesterday, we saw something in the car that might have not been working as expected, Science revealed in the post-race interviews. The Spanish driver elaborated on additional issues with his SF24's power unit, especially in power deployment, which seemed to put him at a disadvantage, particularly in the race's first stint. He added... We also had some issues with the deployment, so today was a bit of damage limitation race for me after what we saw yesterday. All weekend we've been lagging behind, which is not ideal. Honestly not happy because we've been all weekend lagging a bit and a bit behind, a couple of tenths of a second, too slow, which is not ideal. Having said that, P5 and the race how it went, it's not like much happened. The technical complexities that F1 teams face at each Grand Prix are intricate. And for Ferrari, the pressure is always amplified by the high expectations surrounding the iconic mark. Science's insights hinted at potential missteps in Ferrari's strategy. There's something on the idle side that we need to look into as well as the deployment. There were some issues during the whole race that was holding me back, especially in the first stint, so something to look at. I think it's more a different thing, not upgrades. But I cannot go into details. Ferrari's weekend at Imola, although clouded by Science's challenges, had its positive moments. The car demonstrated occasional flashes of speed, and teammate Charles Leclerc's podium finish underscores that the Scuderia has a solid baseline package. Frederic Vasseur, Ferrari team principal, believes that the team's starting position played a decisive role in their performance at the Emilia Romagna Grand Prix, denying them a shot at victory. While acknowledging the progress made with the team's recent updates, he attributes the missed opportunity for victory to challenges faced during qualifying. Vasseur expresses frustration stating that had they secured the first two positions in qualifying, they would have been able to replicate that success in the race. While Monza may be considered Ferrari's ultimate home race, Imola's proximity to their Maranello factory makes it a Tifosi event as well. Whenever the Scuderia races on home soil, there's always an immense show of support, but this also brings heightened pressure. Despite securing a third and a fifth place, Fred Vasseur couldn't help but think about what could have been especially as McLaren seemed to have surged ahead to become Red Bull's closest contenders on that day. After the race, he said, Overall, it's a kind of mixed feeling for me because I think we did a step forward. McLaren did probably the same as us. We compensate, I think, partly the delta with Red Bull, and we are not far away now. I'm a bit frustrated because I think that if we did 1-2 in quali, we would do in the race today. If we missed something, it was in quali and not in the race. Imola poses challenges for overtaking especially with the shortened DRS zone in 2024. While there were overtaking manoeuvres during the race, many of them were due to significant differences in tyre performance rather than strategic positioning. This emphasised the importance of qualifying, 
making it a decisive factor in the race outcome. The positive takeaway for fans is that the gaps among the front runners are narrowing. Although Ferrari hasn't secured a pole position yet, they are showing strong competitiveness. The margins were tight both on Saturday during qualifying and on Sunday in Imola's race, hinting at a potentially exciting trend in the races ahead. It's good news for me, good news for F1, good news for the championship. You have three teams within seven seconds after 63 laps, which is less than one-tenth a lap. It was almost the same from the beginning of the weekend. I think that the competition will be everywhere. The setup of the car will be crucial next week in Monaco. The performance of the driver will be crucial. What is true is that we are at the point now where we will have to speed up the development. Imagine that someone could bring an upgrade one race before when you have three teams within one-tenth. You can jump from P5 to P1. It means we will have to speed up the time to market. As the development race heats up, Red Bull's recent losses to Ferrari and McLaren have injected new life into a championship that seemed predictable at the season's start. With plenty of races left, Vasseur emphasised the unpredictable nature of the 2024 season and the potential for exciting twists ahead. First, we did only seven races out of 24, which means there are still 17 to go. At this point of the season last year, we were 100 points behind Aston Martin and we finished 100 points in front of them. It means that the end of the championship is never after race seven. It's even more true this season because the gap is very close. It's not very often that you have six or potentially eight cars who could win a race. It means that when you are not in a good shape, you can move from P1 to P8, and in P8 you are scoring almost zero. It means that the championship can change in one or two weekends. It's still 17 weekends to go. Let's be focused on Monaco, don't think about the championship, or at least it's what I will tell to my guys tomorrow. It's very, very difficult to predict Monaco. What I can say is that I will have two drivers who are motivated, so far, we always were competitive in Monaco, but again, this one is very, very difficult to predict. That being said, which teams are they worried about? One thing's for sure, it isn't Mercedes. Just when you thought Ferrari snatching the seven-time champion wasn't insulting enough, Vasseur seems to be teasing Toto Wolff about their setbacks. When asked about Mercedes's performance in 2024 after the race, the Frenchman shared his thoughts with Motorsport Italy, sarcastically pointing out their slower pace in development. I don't know about you, but these verbal daggers sure sound like bad blood to me. This is what he said. The Mercedes, they were 28 seconds behind Charles, Leclerc, who finished P3, at the end of the race. So yes, I think they got a little closer. So, is Charles Leclerc onto something with his Red Bull and McLaren accusations? Tell us what you think in the comments section down below. And as always, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Thanks for watching.